I was feeling a little bit remorseful about two weeks ago during New to Kip Day here at the high school. You see, Allison Willis Holly and Jim Manley, who you both saw downstairs just now, had gathered everybody in the cafeteria, and they were teaching them the Kip Credo. They asked all the new to Kip staff members to choose their favorite line in order to develop a conversation about these values. Trying to make a new connection with my new colleagues, I chose we work, plan, create, and dream. Given the opportunity to think back over my eight years at KIPP, what jumped out to me in that moment was the time I've spent reflecting and planning and individually working on my own stuff. I held up my notebook as a prop. I've gone through dozens of these notebooks in my eight years here. I use these notebooks to take notes in meetings, to plan lessons and PD sessions, to reflect and think about my upcoming tests, and to rewrite the lyrics to Katy Perry songs in order to motivate my kids to study for upcoming exams. I really value my work here, you know? I'm an artist. This is my sketch pad. My classroom is my canvas. And I wanted to show my new colleagues that as special as this organization was, what we each bring as far as our effort, creativity, planning, and reflection is really important. But in sharing with them the value of my own reflection in my own notebook, I brought up kind of a funky contradiction in my own head. Here everybody was. They were so excited about KIPP. KIPP is a special organization. They would say, I think there's some magic about KIPP, right? I think that this organization means something bigger than the self. And here I was, talking about my solo work. So I reflected on it and I grappled with it. And after grappling for about two weeks and thinking about a message worth imparting this morning, I decided that I'd rather emphasize team and family as my most valued core value here at KIPP. KIPP has structures at the school level, at the regional level, and at the national level that can help make it so that we can sustain ourselves through our first struggling years, that we can grow our results, and so that one person's success can become scaled on a massive level. I'm proud to be part of an organization that has that structure. But I'm also proud that in my time here, I've leaned into and leveraged those structures to make it work for me and my students. My first year at KIPP, 2010-2011, was a blur. But I know I had a lot of struggles. I was coming from an environment that was way different from living and teaching in New York. I had gone to college at a ritzy campus in New Hampshire, spent my summers commuting from the ritzy campus to a ritzy summer camp, and then my first gig out of college, I taught math and history at a boarding school in Connecticut. Think like Hogwarts, okay? Um, so when I came and started working at KIPP, the challenges of being a new teacher hit me hard. Lesson planning, classroom management, living out of a shoebox apartment, it was all really difficult for me. I lost a lot of weight, I lost a lot of confidence, and a lot of sleep. I have memories of getting into battles with my students. One young woman during my lesson was doodling the subway map on a piece of paper. I was so frustrated. I mean, I'm an engaging dude, right? How could she be spending her attention doing something so different? So when walking by her desk, I pulled the subway map out of her hand. She grabbed the other end and we tore it apart. A young boy fell asleep in the back of the classroom, put his head down, I slapped my hand on his desk in frustration. So much for narrating the positive. On a run with my cross-country coach, Jeff Imwalt, I told him I'd probably quit after two years, if I make it that far. But something changed maybe in December or January of that first year, and it changed when I started leaning into the structures of team and family, particularly visiting other people's classrooms. Jason Leon, who you saw in the Harriet Ball video, was a beloved teacher at the school. Jason taught Algebra II and Trigonometry here at the high school. And I asked him one day if I could spend some time visiting his classroom. He responded, we have an open door policy here at KIPP. <laughs> so I started spending time on the third floor in Jason's classroom. And what I saw was really striking. Students who were acting foolish and unfocused in my class were calm and on task in his. Not only, though, were they calm and on task, but also light and happy. It was clear that Jason had made an effort to make his classroom feel like a family. He would use endearing nicknames for students, making them feel like he had known them forever. He would push them when they didn't use proper math terminology and ask them to correct themselves and be patient with them as they struggled to really join academic language. And I think what most stuck out to me was Jason's ability to connect math concepts to students' lives and to do so in a way that showed them that he was getting to know them. For example, Jason teaches trigonometry there's this one lesson where he has to teach about how to label points on a unit circle. 
Okay, don't worry if you haven't looked at this in 20 years. <laughs> but there's a message that a point on the unit circle can be rewritten as close to the origin or really far away from it if you make various rotations around it. Jason was thinking, how can I make this connect to my kids? And he says to them, you guys love talking about your birthdays, right? So you're all like, it's just two weeks until my birthday. Or you could be like, it's been 50 weeks since my birthday. Or you could say, it's another year and two weeks till my birthday. Suddenly, students were up for learning about sines, cosines, and radians. I'm intensely indebted to Jason's openness and willingness to have me in his classroom. That first year, I experienced a lot of growth, and things got better for me, and I started to feel much more confident in the classroom. When people ask me what my favorite year was at KIPP, I often say 2011. Because that feeling of competence that I started feeling in the spring of that year was such a marked contrast from the incompetence that I had felt in the fall. You know, it was hard to be in Jason's classroom. Here was this guy having so much more success than I was, and in my life, I don't know if I had ever been so far beneath the standard of excellence. But to know it was possible to see the moves that inspired kids, that touched their souls, and uh, to watch a guy teach like Harriet really set a model for me at KIPP. I'm intensely indebted to Jason, um, and for the mentorship he gave me, I've always invested in new staff every year since then. And tomorrow I'll be back running new staff training here at the high school, trying to pay forward that feeling of growth and competence that Jason gave me. All because I was willing to lean in and leverage the structures of team and family. My second year, I learned about another structure of team and family because my administrators, uh, they required us to upload all of our lessons to this online platform called KipShare. KipShare is like a Facebook for teachers. You can search it for materials, you can search it for lesson plans, you can search it for, you know, dating advice if, if you want, and you can connect with other educators around the country. And so we had to upload all our materials to KipShare, and it was through KipShare that I met Melissa. Yep, we met online. Classic story, right? <laughs> Melissa taught AP World History at Kip Austin in Texas, and she served as the high school social studies community leader. She would send out these weekly e-blasts to the high school social studies community. She would ask questions in the e-blasts like, how do you balance joy and rigor in your classroom, right? Creative synthesis of opposites. How do you balance content and skills? How do you make it so that your students think about their essays and want to peer revise? Sucker that I am, I responded to all of these e-blasts, and I quickly built a kinship with Melissa. You know, there were no other KIPP AP World teachers in New York City. And here was a woman who was going through exactly the same challenges that I was. She made me feel like I was trying to solve the right problems, like AP World History was awesome, as two of my students will tell you right there, and like it could make a real difference in the culture of a school. So I started feeling more immersed. Through my work with Melissa, I was asked to be a presenter at the KIPP Humanities Retreat in Austin, Texas that November. It was my first chance to lead a PD session at KIPP. And when we arrived in Austin, the first thing we did was we took advantage of KIPP's open door policy. We went into Melissa's class and she was conducting a peer revision exercise on some essays they had written. She and I immediately locked eyes and she came over to give me a big hug. Here was a woman who had made me feel so seen, so visible in this network where really just a few months before I had felt lost and ready to bow out. After Melissa left KIPP in 2013 to become the director of curriculum for IDEA Public Schools in South Texas, she asked me to carry the mantle as KIPP High School Social Studies Community Leader, a title I held from 2013 to 2017 for four years. I was so grateful for the way that Melissa made me feel connected to this organization, made me feel supported in my work, and so I wanted to pay it forward and try to build a community of teachers around the country doing the work of high school social studies. I had gone from being ready to quit to, be a, to being a fully immersed big kipster in a matter of months. And it's really all because I leaned into the structures of team and family. I said yes to the open door policy, and I answered Melissa's weekly e-blast. <coughs> Through my work with Melissa, I got to start going around the country to various other KIPP events. I went to KIPP National Summit in 2012, 2013 and 2014 to lead the high school social studies community. And it was through the KIPP National Summit that I got, got to meet this guy, Kellen McNulty. Kellen was this superstar history teacher out of the Bay Area. He and I had started uh, teaching at KIPP the same year, but somehow his kids were scoring miles ahead of mine on the AP World History exam. So on a trip out to San Francisco to visit friends one April, 
I took advantage of Kip's open door policy. I visited Kellen's classroom, and what I saw was totally inspiring. Kellen is better than anybody I've seen at getting his students to think and talk about effort. On the top of every one of his handouts, he has this phrase, some people dream of success, others wake up and work hard for it. At the beginning of the school year, he presents an image to his students. It's like an upside down triangle with the bottom tenth filled in. What Kellen says is, the part that's filled in, that's what I can do for you. You have to do the rest yourself. And after every test, students nominate a hardworking peer to go up on the wall and fill in part of the upside down triangle. At 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon in April, Kellen's class was filled to the brim with students who were meeting their requirements for study stations. Kids were quizzing each other on the names of Chinese dynasties, writing down the dates of Japanese imperial periods, and showing how positive and, and in love they were with their experience in AP World History. I came back to New York totally inspired of how to change my classroom and change the culture of my classroom. Really just ways to copy Kellen. The following year, I had my class make t-shirts that said, some people dream of success, others wake up and work hard for it. I started reading books about character, thinking about ways to integrate conversations about effort into my classroom. And most importantly, my students' results really moved. From 40% passing the AP World History exam in my first year, to 60% the second year, and now for the past five years, we're at about 65% passing consistently even though we keep scaling enrollment of the class from 25 my first four years to 50 in years five and six. And this past year, 115 kids took the AP World History exam, including Kaylin Batista, who got a four this past four. <laughs> so by leaning into these structures of team and family, the Kip School Summit, the high school social studies community, and Kellen's open door policy, I really grew and enriched my practice. Team and family can sustain you when you're feeling low. It can make you feel connected to other educators who are going through your same challenges, and it can drive your student results. It can also really massively scale impact, and that's what I want to talk about to close. Right now, there's a KIPP Foundation staff member at an office in Midtown, or in DC, or in Chicago, or in SF, that's studying the data of students like Kaylin and Maya, and trying to think about how they can scale the best practices of KIPP teachers around the country to impact more kids. And it was through that structure that I met a guy named Jorge Miranda in 2014. Jorge is something like the um, director of high school achievement for KIPP National. He's trying to make it so that KIPP high schools can all be as strong or even stronger than this one. Jorge wanted to scale AP enrollment across the KIPP network. And he was frustrated with the training that the college board, the traditional AP vehicle, was giving KIPP teachers. Their training was fine in acquainting people with the course, but not in, tra in training them to operate within a KIPP set. He thought, like somebody, he thought that somebody like me or Kevin could do a better job of training our teachers. And so for the past five summers, I've gone in July to Chicago, or this past year to Columbus, Ohio, to give PD to rising AP World History teachers as we uh, scale this work. Okay, uh, teachers from all over the country meet in a KIPP classroom somewhere, and we dig into meaningful professional development. We talk about how to balance the realities of AP world with the norms of KIPP's culture. And we build a community that lasts all year and beyond. I was looking at some pictures of our work together in Columbus and Chicago, and I was really proud to look at this one. In looking at this picture, we see teachers from places like Brooklyn, Los Angeles, New Orleans, and Atlanta. And we're all building community to help scale AP world around the country. One woman who was an alum of my workshop emailed me a couple weeks ago. She had gotten out of the teaching game and now coaches teachers in San Jose. One of her teachers teaches AP World History and she thought he would benefit from looking at my resources. So I shared my resources with her, had a brief interaction, and she closed with this email. This past July, in Columbus, I had a tough conversation with Jorge at the conference. Jorge wanted to scale the growth of AP World even more. And what he wanted me to do was commit to sharing all of my unit assessments with the other teachers around the network. He wanted me to give up the ability to revise my tests during the year, during the year so that other people could have access to them. I rolled my eyes.
Come on, Jorge. I have worked so hard. Don't you feel like I've earned the autonomy to be able to tinker with my tests throughout the year? I don't know if this is right for me. Jorge let me sit with that comment for a day. And then he came back to me the following day. He said, Sam, it struck me as a little off that you felt like you had earned the autonomy. Earned autonomy. That's not really what we value here at KIPP, and that's not what you signed up for. Yeah, you have badass results. But that doesn't earn you autonomy. That earns you expanded impact. You're going to give up some autonomy. And in the process, KIPSers from around the country are going to have better experiences in AP World History. Team and family doesn't give up on each other. Jorge was not only responsible for my success, but for success of KIPSers around the country. And so I spent July tinkering with and finalizing my AP World assessments so that I can set them aside and commit to giving them this year. Last week, they went up on KIPSHARE. And you can see that we're sharing AP World unit plans and unit assessments across the network this year. 17 different high schools will be giving the same unit assessments this year to way more KIPSTERS. Okay? Um, what started as a project of about 100 kids in mine and Kellen's and Melissa's classroom is growing. Just this past year, 1,228 KIPSTERS across the country got to take AP World. Okay. Teachers in Tulsa, Nashville, New Orleans, San Francisco, DC, Atlanta, Boston, and New York are going to dig into my curriculum and resources in an effort to grow college access, increase student achievement, and hopefully make a more empathetic and understanding humankind. <laughs> Jason's warmth, Melissa's connectedness, Kellen's focus on effort, and Jorge's focus on results are going to make their way into way more classrooms than I could have ever dreamed of. You know, I'm an artist. This notebook is my sketch pad. And my classroom is my canvas. But what I failed to realize two weeks ago is that my paintbrush is imbued with the work of some real masters of teaching and of scaling practices. All I had to do was take advantage of Kip's open door policy. Thank you.